Get your free copy of the complete tutorial at www.teachucomp.com forward slash free. One of the most important lists in QuickBooks is the chart of accounts. You can open this list by selecting lists from the menu bar and then choosing the chart of accounts command. The chart of accounts lists all of the accounts within your company file. These accounts track all incoming and outgoing money and tell you how much you currently own and owe. When you set up your business in QuickBooks, you get a default list of accounts. Once that has been accomplished, you will probably need to make some changes. You can add, edit, inactivate, delete, and rename accounts within this list. Generally, you can perform any of these tasks by first selecting the account within the chart of accounts that you would like to change if needed. Then click the Account button in the lower left corner of the Chart of Accounts window, and from the pop-up menu that appears, you can then select the desired command to perform. Now conveniently, in any list that you can open by choosing the Lists command within the menu bar, you can rely on being able to click the button in the lower left corner of the list to perform the basic list-related tasks. Note that the button is always named the exact same thing as the list within which it appears. So, for example, the Account button is the one to click to perform list management in the Chart of Accounts window. Or, if you were looking at the Item list, then you would click the Item button in the lower left corner to perform list management. Now, to illustrate, assume that you wanted to add a new Savings account into your Chart of Accounts. So, first select Lists and then Chart of Accounts from the menu bar, or you can press Ctrl plus A on your keyboard to open the list. Next, click the Account button in the lower left corner of the list, and then choose the New command from the pop-up menu that appears. This opens the Add New Account, Choose Account Type window, where you will begin entering the new account information. You must first select the account type from the account option shown. Technically, a savings account is an asset. However, in QuickBooks, when working with asset accounts that have a cash basis like checking, savings, petty cash, and others, you will want to assign the account as a bank account type to note its cash nature and to be able to use it within the appropriate transaction windows in QuickBooks. Now, after selecting the desired account type, click the Continue button to move to the next screen. You will then see the Add New Account window. Note that when you selected the account type on the previous screen and then clicked the Continue button, all it really did was select an account type from the account type drop-down shown at the top of this window. Next, you need to enter a name for the account into the Account Name text box. For now, skip the Subaccount of checkbox and drop-down, as we'll discuss creating subaccounts momentarily, and we'll assume that the account that we are creating is not a sub-account of any other main account. The account description field is optional, as are the bank account number, routing number, and tax line mapping fields. Also, if you have account numbering enabled for your company file, you can enter an account number into the number field. Now when you're finished, you can simply click the Save and Close button to create the new account and then close the new account window. Alternately, you may continue creating new accounts without having to close and reopen the new account window by just clicking the Save and New button instead. Doing this will create the account and clear the new account window, but leave the window open so that you can continue creating accounts. Now if you choose to do this, then note that the next time you will need to select the account type to create from the account type drop down at the top of the window to start creating the new account. Also note that you could click the cancel button if you want to close the new account window without creating an account. Also, to create an account that had a balance as of the start date of your company file, you enter the balance of the account as of the start date by clicking the Enter Opening Balance button. This will open the Enter Opening Balance window, where you can enter the amount as of the start date of your company file into the Statement Ending Balance field. Then select the Statement Date, which must be either before or as of the start date, 
from the Statement Ending Date Calendar selector. Then you can click the OK button to save the account's opening balance. The amounts that are entered into this window are attributed to the opening bal equity account within your chart of accounts. Note that for accounts that are created after your company's start date, you simply create the account and then enter the transactions that show where the new account received its initial funding from. When creating accounts, you will not need to use the opening balance field after entering your beginning account balances when initially creating your company file. Now you can also create sub-accounts of accounts that have been created within the chart of accounts. This allows you to attribute transaction amounts to specific sub-accounts of a main account for reporting purposes. So for example, if you had an automobile expense account, you could create sub-accounts for gas and maintenance and repairs to easily show the different amounts spent on gas versus repairs and maintenance for company vehicles along with the total amount spent on automobile expenses within a report. Now the balance of any account that has subaccounts is the total of all the transactions attributed to the main account, including all balances within its subaccounts. You create a subaccount in the exact same way in which you create any other type of account within the chart of accounts. Just ensure that you have the primary account for which you want to create the subaccounts made first. Now one thing to note when you are creating subaccounts is that subaccounts must be of the exact same account type as their parent account. And the only difference when creating a subaccount versus a primary account is that you must check the subaccount of checkbox and then select the primary account from the adjacent dropdown. Now, if you wish to edit the information that's associated with an account, you need to first select the account that you want to edit within the Chart of Accounts window. Next, click the Account button in the lower left corner of the list, and then choose the Edit Account command from the pop-up menu that appears. Also, if you like to right-click, you can simply right-click on the account that you want to edit, and then select the Edit Account command with a left click. Either way, you will then see the Edit Account window appear. Here you can edit the account information to make any changes that you want. And then simply click the Save and Close button to finish. Now you may have accounts that you never use listed in your chart of accounts. If you have an account that you would like to delete in the chart of accounts, you may do so, but only if there are no transactions associated with the account. Once there are transactions assigned to an account, you can no longer delete it as that would compromise your company's financial information. In that case, you would first need to remove the transactions from the account either by reassigning each transaction within the account to other accounts or by deleting them entirely if they are incorrect. However, this may not be feasible for your situation. After there are no transactions in an account, then you can go ahead and delete it. Now to delete an empty account shown in the chart of accounts, first select the account, then click the account button in the lower left corner, and choose the delete account command from the pop-up menu that appears. After selecting the delete command, you will need to click OK in the message box that appears in order to permanently delete the account. If you have an account that you used at one time in the past, but no longer actively use, 
you can inactivate it to hide it since you cannot delete it. Now when an account is inactivated, it will not appear by default within your chart of accounts. However, the information within the account is retained for reporting in QuickBooks. You can actually make items in almost all of your lists inactive to hide items that you no longer use. In the chart of accounts, you can inactivate an account by simply selecting the name of the account, clicking the account button in the lower left corner of the list window, and then selecting the make account inactive command from the pop-up menu. Now inactivating list items will be covered in depth in Lesson 3.8. Like what you see? Pick up your free copy of the complete tutorial at www.teachucomp.com forward slash free.